Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to an amazing day. It is so beautiful out here. It feels amazing to just be out here and relax. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Amen. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is going to encourage you and strengthen you in this day. And oh my goodness, I just love talking about the Lord. Ooh. Oh, I just love talking about the Lord. And thank you, Lord. I'm advancing on the book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. Now that I am running my race with such grace and power and strength. And today, you're going to run your race of faith with grace, power, and strength. Amen. So, also send this to your friends and family that need encouragement. This is going to bless them, y'all. If you only knew what our faith does on this realm of earth and what it does in bringing forth the kingdom of heaven. And so as you join in today, you're going to hear just such encouragement of truths of scripture that as Jesus said that in the model prayer of Luke 11, one through four, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I am just persuaded beyond all doubt. I am persuaded of the power of God because I've experienced it and I've witnessed it as the Lord has just done mighty, great and mighty things. Hey, Kim, love you. Great and mighty things. And so I want to just share a little snippet in relation to, hey, Timberly, in relation to a little bit of science. You know, I mentioned in my Facebook post this morning just about the power of our faith and the power of Jesus Christ in that name. Oh my goodness, the power. It is more powerful than all the electromagnetic field combined. It is more powerful than the field of gravity. It is more powerful than the quantum physics field. The field of God, the field of of Jesus, oh my goodness, it is beyond anything you can ever think or imagine. And so I want to bring you encouragement today as we get into truths that will just super bless you to give you just a snippet of what your faith can do. While the enemy battles you on this front, while the enemy distracts you, and oh my goodness, how you can overcome, amen. And also, if you have not read my note, oh my goodness, or see my video from yesterday, subscribe to my YouTube channel, but also read regroup number three note, number three note, regrouping number three about the kindness of God and it being a link in our lives, especially in regrouping. So in this time of regrouping, as I mentioned yesterday, which is the month of August. August is a time to regroup. We're in a lot of swift change, but we also want to make sure that we're positioned correctly, right? And so we can be in a time of regroup, but if you're not in position, you're not going to advance forward. And you know, God is a God of promoting and exalting the humble, right? And he brings low those who are proud in heart. And we want to be prepared, you know, just like the upper room, they were prepared and the power of Holy Spirit came upon them in the book of Acts. Saints right now is a time of preparation. And so God has me spending the month of August as a time to regroup, amen? A time to regroup. And so listen to and also read yesterday's regroup number three. Amazing, beyond amazing. And so I want to get into encouraging you and strengthening you this morning in the power of the Holy Spirit and what God has for you today, amen. And so the Lord has been showing me how many need encouragement, that you just feel bad about yourselves. You might feel discouraged. You might feel that you're not making spiritual progress. And with spiritual progress, you see a scripture that you're blessed in life and in health as your soul is blessed, right? And so we want those blessings to be made known and manifest in our lives. And so that's what today is about, and it's gonna encourage you. And so although you might feel like you're failing over and over and over again, and in my memories, 
there is a post that is absolutely phenomenal and it is about that and it is about the price of the call and so i'm going to get into a little bit about the perkinji cell in the cerebral cortex that i mentioned yesterday i got behind a personalized car tag that was perkinji and it is so funny because i knew i'd seen that name i knew i had come across it and once i looked it up of course looking at the Purkinje neuron, it is in the cerebral cortex. I had studied it over the last couple of months here and there. And so I'm gonna bring in the Purkinje cell just a little bit and the uniqueness of that cell in our brain and how phenomenal that cell is and how God has fearfully and wonderfully made us and how we have to resist the issues of this life that would pull us down and know that we are walking, talking representation of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 11 12 to 13 those that see it perceive it seize it by force those who don't see it don't seize it by force and so God wants to encourage you amen the power of your faith and so the Purkinje neuron cell it is in our brain it is in the cerebral cortex and it's responsible for motor execution, execution of motor function. And so me moving my hand, us walking, us uh, moving our arms up and down, us just exercising, all of this is so funny, there's a V around me. All of this is because of the Purkinje cell. And so this Purkinje cell is very unique. It's a neuron in our cerebral cortex. And that neuron specifically is in the production in relation to GABA. And GABA stimulates dopamine. And so dopamine is that feel good hormone. The interesting thing about this Purkinje cell is it has so many gazillion dendrites. It has massive amounts of dendrites compared to other neurons in our brain. And it's so amazing because it almost looks like somewhat of an olive tree to some respect and it even mentions about olive and so that's what i would compare the Purkinje neuron cell in our brain but what's also interesting that i was blown away with was that it has the shape of a flask y'all is that not crazy how one of the incredible neuron cells types in our brain, the Purkinje cell, P-E-R-K-I-N-J-E, -E, the Purkinje cell has the shape of a flask. Is that not crazy that the cell has the shape of a flask? And so immediately I thought of Matthew 25, and this is what we're gonna get into today. And it's so funny because this is what's also in my memories today. And so I'm gonna get into dopamine, which is also the feel good hormone it's a motivating reward hormone okay not i'm mean, not hormone i'm sorry a reward molecular signal expression okay and so we're talking about feeling that reward that god is genesis 15 1 our great reward what's interesting is in genesis 15 1 abram didn't think he was going to have an heir to his estate he thought his nephew was going to be the one in which he passed down his estate to. And back then in the ancient days, of course, that was just a sign of complete failure. If you didn't have an heir being a father, being a man, a married man, if you didn't have an heir being a married woman, if you didn't have a child, not having a child represented the curse that was upon the person because scripture says, that God blesses the womb. We see this in Deuteronomy 28, that God blesses the womb. And so the curse where the enemy attacks our members is keeping us from walking in the blessings thereof of what God has promised. So God's promises are yes and amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, he has thoughts that are to give you a hope and a future. And that word thoughts is mechashaba. And Mekashaba actually means invent. It means thoughts. And it means, hey, Tammy, don't, uh, oh, oh, good, Tammy. And I was gonna say, uh, oh, I thought you were saying you lost signal. 
Y'all make sure y'all find me on YouTube. Tammy, look for me on YouTube. And don't hesitate to message me about my notes. They are beyond phenomenal. Y'all don't hesitate to message me about my notes. They're beyond phenomenal, right? And so what is amazing is Abram, God, brought him himself as a great reward. Sorry, I got distracted. I get distracted sometimes when I'm trying to read. Sorry, forgive me. In fact, I'm going to just slide comments away so I don't look at it and get distracted. I love y'all's responses, by the way. I just don't want to get distracted. And so God was Abram's great reward. And this is the thing, saints of God, is that wherever your treasure, your heart is, your treasure is there is going to be the manifestation of what you are about. Are you about the Father's business like Jesus said? And so we see with Abram, he's wanting an heir. He feels like he's not gonna have God's blessing. He feels forsaken. He's in great fear. And God comes to Abram and says, be not fearful for I am your exceeding great reward. It also says in scripture, in Hebrews 11:6, as well as Romans 11, we also see that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He is a rewarder of those who seek Him, and that when we seek Him, we must seek Him by what? Faith. Ding, 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 ding. And that's what today is going to be about. It is going to be about your faith. And so, in the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, Scripture shows about the power of our intent, and that we move things in this realm of earth based on our faith. Jesus said, be it unto you according to your faith. And so in the invisible realm, we see the demonstration of the power of the name of Jesus Christ, the demonstration of the kingdom of heaven to come upon each and every promise that God has given us so that we can see the manifestation thereof. I'm gonna pray right now. God says that some of y'all are distracted and I just feel a hindrance of the enemy attacking many of you. So I'm just gonna pray right now and just be in agreement for those of y'all who this is for, amen. God, I just pray the power of your word of truth be upon each and every person watching and listening to this broadcast. I take authority over the distractions of the enemy that is pulling on the souls of each and every person. I command those lying serpents to be lifted off in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I pray God, the kingdom of heaven, the garment of your expressive praise be in and upon each and every listener. God, I take authority over the spirit of divination over Python that is attacking the minds, the ability of faith of those watching this broadcast. And I take your sword and I cut those cords of Python and I command it to loose them and go into the wilderness in Jesus name. And I speak God that the spirit of the Lord is upon each and every listener. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I just declare God a fresh anointing, a new anointing be upon each and every one as they enter the unfolding and the entrance of your word today, that it brings understanding, that it brings light in Jesus name. Amen. And so glory to God, man, there was a hindrance of the enemy attacking some of y'all and I just felt it and I could just feel that energy. I could feel it as an intercessor. I could feel it attacking some of y'all. And the Holy Spirit was just showing me where it was just like chaos around you. And it was trying to bring so much hindrance and distraction, distraction, amen Lottie. It was trying to bring so much hindrance and distraction. And God just cut that off of you in Jesus mighty name, amen. Woo, amen and amen and amen. And so let me get into this Perkinji neuron cell. It is phenomenal. And I'm gonna get into Matthew 25, and I'm gonna get into the power of your faith, because that is what moves heaven and earth in our prayers. The prayers of the righteous avails tremendous power. We also see in scripture, in relation to our faith, 
that it can move mountains, that God listens and hears our prayer, and that when we come to Him, we must come to Him in faith, and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now, that word reward, that term also means to remunerate. And so what does that look like? Oh, you're gonna love today. And I'm gonna bring in the Olympics with the gymnast for the USA Women's, Jordan. And I'm gonna show you this today and it's gonna be powerful. And so it's remunerate. And so just like the gymnast for the Olympics, just like those women prepared, they won the gold medal as a team and also Simone Biles and Jordan for the floor exercise for individual. They also won, Biles won the silver and Jordan won the bronze. But initially she didn't because what happened, they had her at a certain score and so she was actually fifth and Romania was going to win the bronze. Romania was celebrating, but guess what? Her coach, Jordan's coach for USA, asked for an inquiry, an inquiry. And so what does that mean? She's saying, hey, wait a minute. You missed a skill that Jordan did and her score is incorrect because with that skill, her score should be higher. And so her coach put an inquiry in and sure enough, once the inquiry was done, they reviewed her routine they saw the skill, they bumped her up a 10th, and she ended up winning the bronze medal. Y'all, that is the exact example, okay, of being remunerated. That means to do an account, to account for. That's what reward is. And so James, in the book of James says, you say you have faith, I will show you my faith by my works. Now, we're not talking about the works to earn God's favor, to earn salvation. You can't do that. Jesus did that for each and every one of us. Amen. But it is about, are you doing the will of the Father? Just like Jesus said in Luke 11, 1 through 4, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know what the month of August is about in regrouping? It is about the will of the Father. And just like I felt those hindrances that were attacking some of you online and how it was just kind of throwing you off kilter and bringing a little distraction, a little chaos, those hindrances are indicative of just being caught up and distracted from the Father's will that if you put your eyes on the things of this world, on things such as circumstances, and everything is saying there's gonna be failure, it's gonna be negative, it's gonna go down for the count, it's gonna look bad, oh my goodness. No, God says, hold on to faith. Now faith, Hebrews 11, one through three. Now faith, God is saying, it doesn't matter what your circumstances look like. We see this in Isaiah 60 verse one. It does not matter why, because the power of Jesus Christ in you, the power of God in you, that power is stronger than the electromagnetic field. It is stronger than the gravity field. It is stronger than quantum physics field. It is stronger than the quantum field. All of the power in this earth cannot compare to the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is the king of glory. He is the Lord of the battle. He has already defeated all of hell. He has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He has overcome all the power of this world. Why? Because he is the king of glory, the king of the kingdom of heaven. And heaven is a higher dimension and people cannot comprehend it because they're trying to look for it with their eyes. It comes with faith, it comes with believing. And this is what we're gonna look at as God moves you into this time to regroup. As you let go of the badness that's within your members, that's attached to the tree of the knowledge of I'm good, I'm bad, I'm good, I'm evil. 
and that bipolar relationship where you stop looking at circumstances to define you and you stop looking at the opinions of others and you put your eyes like flint on Jesus. Like me being on this broadcast today, y'all, I have been so distracted with everything that's going on around me, the noises, the sounds, all the little things that are going on around me that could pull my attention. And as God has had me say for the last two years, writing over two and a half years, the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, for the last two years, God has been saying, whatever has your attention controls your intent. Why is that important? Because it is your intent that is the component, that is the makeup of your faith. Your faith is composed and made up with the energy at work, ergon, Jesus said, I know your works, I know your works. That word in Greek used in scripture is ergon. I know your ergon, I know your energy at work inside of you. And that energy is negative, it's of the world. We don't want that energy, right? We want the kingdom of heaven and so what does it look like? It looks like you are crazy, okay? It looks like you've lost your mind and as me having been a psychotherapist and outpatient psychotherapist working at outpatient psych, working with the seriously mentally ill adults, working with seriously mentally ill long-term care placement children that were in place in, in psychiatric care and long-term care placement. Listen, this is a classic definition for schizophrenic, for just clueless and mental. You're going to look mental to the world. And the reason it is, is because the standards that you operate are not of this world. That is what Matthew 25 is about. Matthew 25, the wise virgins look foolish to the world. The reason that their flask is all the way full is because the reward is in heaven. The reward is to do the Father's will. Whereas uh, foolish virgins, who have their flask halfway full, they're kind of one foot in the world, one foot in God. And you can't do that. It does not work. You won't do the will of the Father and say so you're not going to do His works. You're going to be tempted and you're going to do the work of the world. All of the pressures of this present age that would come against your identity, against your soul, that's what the enemy attacks your identity, your soul, and trying to convince you you're bad in order to manipulate you into a mold to perform under the kingdom of the world's vices to make you feel good when you're doing what the kingdom of the world wants you to do. Listen, God's gifts are without repentance, but I will tell you that the kingdom of the world will try to pull on that gift and get the use of it for the kingdom of the world. And you've got to resist that, amen, Tammy? You've got to resist that, saints. You have to know that your gift is given from God for heaven's purpose, heaven's plan, and it's going to look absolutely crazy at times from those that are of the kingdom of the world. And so their definition of you because they don't understand you, because you're strange and you're weird and they can't figure you out. God taught me a long time ago. He said, Robin, people always criticize who or what they don't understand. And when people don't understand who you are and it kind of tilts them and they kind of argue against that because it brings to light what is going on within their own members. One of the things I, I address in the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease, is how when I bring in the book, Chase Stewart's Semantics from 1938 that A.W. Tozier referred to, and I read that book by Chase Stewart from 1938, The Tyranny of Words, and one of the things that really came to light was that all the different experts of this world, philosophers, scientists at times, uh, people that are in even religion, politics, there's all these kind of makeups of what they believe the 
things should be. And guess what? It is all abstract. It is not concrete. And what I learned is that when anything is abstract and it's not made concrete, it can be man-made traditions that nullify the power of the word. And so you can bend and bow to the traditions, to the philosophies, to the mindset, the regulation, the rules made by mankind of this present age of the kingdom of the world. And you can get nowhere with your gift. And it will be violated, used, and prostituted for the world and not for the Father's purpose. So today is about the reward. They're doing the blowing thing over there. The reward of God. And saints, it's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you your reputation. It's gonna cost you looking crazy. People are gonna think you've lost your mind. You, they, they're gonna doubt you. I thank God that he gives me dreams, very detailed, to tell me things that are gonna come. I thank God that he gives me visions. I thank God that he gives me scriptures. I thank God that I can hear the still small voice of God in his direction so that I don't lean on my own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But in all of my ways, I'm acknowledging him and he's directing my path. Why? Because my reward is in heaven. My reward is not in this earth. This is only temporary. What is long lasting is the works that pass through the fire. And those works are God's works. And that's what he rewards, amen. And so I want to bring to you today as we end, it's so funny because the, uh, those blowers are so distracting, y'all. It's so much distraction today. Woo, I could have done this inside and gotten a lot easier. <laughs> Y'all see the struggle and the wrestling? This is how it looks like in the natural with your gift, with you hearing God. Okay, so let me just bring in, uh, like over the last couple weeks, now almost three weeks, thank you, Lord, that I went through swift change and it was just like a storm, the worst storm I've ever had in my life, ever in my life. And my fixing to be 57 years old next month, years of life, what I went through in July was the absolute worst thing I've ever gone through in my life. But God, but God, and he kept me solid. He kept my, my faith rooted and grounded securely. Ephesians 3, 16 through 20, 17 and 18, especially in the love of Christ. And that became my rock. So that when the winds blew, when the storms came, my faith was in Christ, not Robin, not what others said. My faith was in Christ. And so let me just share this so, so it will help explain. And even looking at me walking in the call since, oh gosh, a long time. Just being in full-time ministry since uh, 2012, 2011, February 24th, 2011. You know, I have been in the will of the father way before that doing things that people would think robin what are you doing do you know what you're doing what are you doing because people didn't understand it i didn't understand it okay and it's not for you to understand until the father shows you and sometimes god doesn't show you just like he didn't show joseph in the pit in potiphar's in the prison he didn't show joseph the understanding of what his dreams meant that he gave him years earlier. But Joseph understood those dreams in the end when he ended up in the palace. Okay, saints of God. And so that's what today is about and a time to regroup. And you have to remain humble so you're not influenced or pressured by the world. You're not given over to being moved by circumstances in your life. And so in the month of July, as we were going through swift change, uh, thank God he gave me dreams two months ago, details, I just didn't know it then, of where certain people would be. And I didn't understand it. I, like I told you, I had a dream, there was a glass wall, my loved one was on the other side of the glass wall. 
and Rich and I were in this cabin type building. I did not, a house cabin. I didn't know what it was. And then God began to give me other dreams and details about what was to come in July. And so I had no clue. I just didn't know what I didn't know because it hadn't happened yet. I didn't have understanding. But you know what I did do? Is I did move forward and I said, God's given me a word. He's confirmed it with his dream. And I am going to believe him no matter what. And so when circumstances happened and it was a storm, but God prepared me as much as he wanted me to be knowledgeable about what was to take place. He prepared me. And so as he prepared me, all of a sudden, when the storm hit and the circumstances happened, I'm like, God, I didn't think this was going to happen. I thought swift change was going to look differently than this. Man, that, it keeps going. Sorry, <laughs> I'm being distracted. This guy's throwing the poo away, the dog poo. Isn't that amazing? God's going to get rid of the dog poo today, the dung, the 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 dung of the enemy on your life, right? The dung gate. Satan's gone and dung it again, but no more in Jesus name. You're going to get washed of the dung in Jesus name. And so as circumstances happened and all of it was going on, I just put my faith in what God had told me. I was unmoved. And when pressure came and I was just being told that I was wrong, that I was missing it, and that, you know, that I needed to do this and I needed to do that. I didn't have peace. And again, it felt like all of these hornets, these bees of some sort were all around my head and they were just buzzing. They were so loud. But you know what? I learned this a long time ago. Where, where, when and where I feel pressure. Guess who's not in it? God. It is Satan that brings pressure and not God. And I'll give this testimony at the end. And so I said, I've been through this before, time and time again, and pressure does not come from God. So I refuse to be moved and I will not move until I feel peace. And so I immediately pursued peace in my household, in my house. And then peace came and God said, Robin, do not do anything. Do nothing just wait on me wait on me to show up wait on my directions and i just waited i did nothing and i just waited on god and i just put the thoughts of circumstances that looked bad i put the thoughts of anything that would make me feel bad and try to attach to my identity because I know that that's of the tree of the knowledge of I'm good, I'm bad, I'm good, I'm evil, which is of the kingdom of the world. And again, there's two kingdoms, the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of world is where you will put your identity if you don't know who you are in Christ. And you will allow pressure from the things of the world to pressure you into stepping outside of the Father's will not doing his works and to being a foolish virgin. That's what the foolish virgins look like. They were pressured by the kingdom of the world. And so their gift was given of use to the kingdom of the world and not for the kingdom of heaven. And because of that, they did not get the reward, which was Christ Jesus. Listen, saints, he that endures to the end shall be saved. We don't hear this a lot. We think that our salvation is once and done, sealed, and that's the deal. No, saints. It is called Philippians 2.12. Work out your salvation in fear and trembling. It is called doing the will of the Father. It is called showing your fruits, that people will know you by your fruits. It doesn't mean that sometimes you might be physically off and chemically off with hormones or molecular signaling. And so you might act out of character. That can be fixed, okay? But working out your salvation in fear and in trembling means that your heart is intent and intends to walk in the Spirit to do the will of the Father. Those that walk in the Spirit are the sons, the daughters of God. Amen? And so this is where we're going to end. As I did not feel 
allow the pressure of the circumstances, of the noise of the world that tried to pressure me by saying how bad I am and that if I did this, I would be good. No, the kingdom of the world will criticize those who walk in the kingdom of heaven. Even other Christians, listen, they can be weak. We're all weak. Listen, I, I'm sure I've done it. I'm sure I've done it. And also, FYI, one thing that I've learned is that some, and I wrote about this in my first book, Glory, Glory, Sisterhood, God's Sorority. It's, it's a good book. And about judging others. And that some of your trials that you're in that come upon you are because you've judged somebody. And because you judge them, guess what? That trial is at your doorstep in your house because you brought it on yourself. And so one of the things I always encourage people, listen, just examine your heart. See if you judge someone, judge someone and then just repent and then it will stop in Jesus name. And so one of the things that I've learned and going through circumstances that even those that are Christians can be stressed out and that stress causes them because they feel good and bad and because they're feeling that pressure themselves they can try to pass that pressure onto you listen you just have to pray for others you have to stand on what god's given you you can't cannot be moved and then all of a sudden the will of the father will show up and it the peace of god will overtake you and so as i didn't move over those two and a half almost three weeks that the trial went on all of a sudden, every prayer that I prayed, that God told me to pray about God, let this take place, let this take place. And y'all, it was miraculous. It was miracles. And these miracles took place. Boom, boom, boom. And everything in the natural said, it's not going to happen. And people were saying, no, that won't happen. Listen, saints of God, what God has for you, what God says will happen no one can stop it. It's going to happen because you have the favor of God. Mercy, truth, and kindness are bound to your neck. You have God's favor. You have good understanding with others, and you have high esteem. That's what Proverbs 3, 3, and 4 say, and you have to trust in God's word. And so let me end with this testimony about pressure. Back in 2004, God had me say, listen, God, take down my idols bring prudence and humble me give me prudence and humility and take down my idols in one moment i began to just lose things we lost our house we lost a vehicle and it was like we were stripped bare and god told me this he said robin those things that you got were from the kingdom of the world in your own strength but what i bring you from the kingdom of heaven and my plan cannot be taken away. And so God humbled me and I was very humbled. And I remember as we were getting ready to move out of that beautiful house that I was now losing and it was going in foreclosure in 2005, it went into foreclosure. And I remember moving and going into getting ready to go into a rental place and this man knocked on my door and he said, ma'am, uh, don't you want to do a quick claim deed? I want to do a quick, quick claim deed. And, you know, I want you to just consider this before your house goes into foreclosure. And also it was a driven home. It had stucco. And so because I was a first time home owner of that home when it was built and done, I had a lawsuit case on it years, like two or three years earlier. And so it was about two weeks out before our house would be foreclosed on at the courthouse back in 2005 and I said uh, to this man I said no and I told the man I said let me tell you what pressure comes from Satan and so I said this isn't God because it's pressure and I feel pressure and I'm sorry to say I'm not gonna do that and so we found the house that I had my eye on that had been for sale and my eye just kept going to that house back in 2005. And I just felt that that was our house. And then all of a sudden the house went from sale to for rent. And immediately I jumped on it. And so we got the rental 
and we were on the day, the time that we moved into this house, the time that we moved, while we're moving out, this man that wanted the quick claim deed was trying to pressure me to go into it, came back to our house as we were moving out like the last day we were moving out. And he said, I just want to tell you that your faith touched me so much that I have to speak to your husband and get ministry. Y'all, this man was inspired by my faith. Now I'm losing everything. I'm getting a foreclosure. I've lost a car. We are just being stripped from the world's perspective. But guess what's being built in me? It's the kingdom of heaven. It is faith. It is the intention of God that is stronger than the quantum field, the electromagnetic field, the gravity field. It is stronger than all the power of this world because Jesus overcame the world in all his power. That is built in me a most holy faith that has the power to move mountains. That's what was in me. That's what touched this man. Now watch our God. Watch how powerful our God is. And so Rich stepped out. He's ministering to this guy. I'm finishing packing up, getting cars loaded. You know, just little things. Because Rich wouldn't let me get do big things. He still doesn't. He's very old-fashioned. He still opens my car door all the time and opens doors for me. He will not let me open a door. And so I'm, I'm in this space. I'm packing. We get moved to this wonderful 1,000-square-foot rental house. It is so small, but you know what? I feel like a millionaire. Why? Because I have the kingdom of heaven and I'm not shaken. And people might think, oh my goodness, look at them. They're having to go to bankruptcy. They're getting foreclosed on. They got a car repoed. Oh, let me tell you what. Let me tell you about our God. This is awesome. And so we had just moved into the house. And the day before the foreclosure in 2005, on our old house the day before watch this i get a phone call from my attorney on the stucco drivet case and he said robin they've settled and this is the amount that you're going to get and i said you better accept it now because tomorrow that house is going to be sold at the courthouse for foreclosure and immediately my lawyer got that settlement done I would not have had it had I did the quick claim deed. It was at the midnight hour. Saints of God, I have seen faith resurrect the sick, those that are dying. I've seen faith cast out demons, the demonically oppressed and set them free where their countenance changes right in front of you and they are forever undone. I'll give you this one last testimony. It was about 2011. I'm preaching in Prattville, Alabama. As I'm preaching at the church there, a woman walks up to me and I minister to her and I see all this demonic oppression on her. And God has me pray and demons are cast out of that woman right there at that altar that she gets up and she is, y'all, you can't even tell the woman, like her countenance changed. She looks totally different. She runs around the church building, the sanctuary, which was pretty big, seven times. Wow! She is free. She is running around the church building. She gets my CDs and she said, can I take some of your CDs? And she probably got about 50 of them, just handfuls of CDs. And I said, yeah, just take them. And she just gave them out. And so I come back about two or three months later and I see the woman and this woman had been a drug addict. She had been like a prostitute, a drug addict bound up. I'm talking about bound up seriously. And then, oh my goodness, watch this. I see her two or three months later when I come back to minister at that same place again, she walks in. I did not even recognize her. That is how different she looked. Saints, that is the power of Jesus Christ. He has got more power in his name than all of this, all the different fields, gravity, electromagnetic, quantum, all of those fields in this earth combined. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has more power than that. 
Now, saints, hold on, because just like that Purkinje cell, the neuron that's in the brain that does a multiplicity of things, and the biggest thing that it does is do in relation to molecular signaling with GABA in order to produce dopamine, and that dopamine is a reward, and it looks like an olive tree. It looks like uh, branches of an olive tree to me is what it looks like in our brain and our cerebral cortex. It's a special neuron that produces dopamine. And so saints, think about this. Wait on your reward. Don't get the reward of the world. And so the reward of heaven will cost everything. It will cost you looking crazy. It will cost misunderstandings. It will cost cost you losing thank you jesus the things of this world that might be in your possession we don't want the things of this world we want the kingdom of heaven we want god's plans in jesus name amen god bless y'all love you